pleasure to welcome Sean Duperon. She's a legend in her own right. We call her the TV queen. She is the winner of six Emmy Awards. She does an amazing job inspiring people everywhere she goes. She is also known as the Gossip Queen. She's actually, in fact, <laughs> getting her PhD in Gossip. I'm told that there actually exists a PhD in Gossip. There does. So welcome, Sean. Hey, thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. So let's begin with the, the gossip part. You know, when you talk about gossip, it certainly gives you the negative connotation. Sure. Right? But you were mentioning earlier, it's only about 5-7% of negativity associated with it. Mostly it is positive. Yeah. So if you can expand can, on that. Gossip gets such a bad rap. And it really is only 5-7% to 7 is that negative kind. And it's so funny, there's so many statistics on gossip. And there's probably a hundred of us gossip experts in the U.S. I mean, it's a real, legitimate research endeavor. And um, I'm almost done, I'm, you know, in my PhD phase. But here's the thing, 90% of what comes out of our mouths is gossip, 90%. And it's, it all falls into the definition, right? Like, so what is gossip? Anytime you're talking about somebody who's not there, that's considered gossip. Use that plumber, he's fabulous. Hire that business, they're wonderful. Don't use that guy, he's going to mess up your lawn. All of that is gossip. And, you know, we usually think the malicious kind. The problem with this is when you put it in the business perspective where people are doing, maybe subconsciously we all do that like you say. Yeah. Um, how do we take it to the next level to make it a positive impact and be beneficial to our everyday lives? Yeah. Gossip marketing is, the, is what is going to make or break your business. People do business with people they like. Especially now, we're in a civic stage of marketing right now. And it's all about being raw, it's all about being real and authentic. Um, those old emails that you'd see, um, you know, when you get that internet marketing, you know, big long pages to read all this stuff to buy something, people are not doing that anymore. They're buying because someone told them about somebody, that they're wonderful, that their service is great, that their software is fabulous. We are buying by word of mouth. And gossip marketing technically is word of mouth. Just like when you say, go see a movie. I just saw the movie Hereafter. Go see that movie. Loved it, right? Loved it, endorsing that movie. And things create energy by emotion. So the more emotion that's attached to your business, and I don't mean drama, trauma, but emotion where people are moved, touched, um, feel important. It's all about that emotionality because emotions is what travels the most in gossip. I think we are living in a very good time because of technology. Now that we use the social media platforms so aggressively, I think this is the time where people can push, really push up. But sometimes it's just overwhelming. So how do you tell people to use it the right way? You know what? I tell people to use their intuition. Get good guidance around you because we can't do everything, right? You gotta farm some stuff out. You gotta farm your social media out. You gotta farm your traditional media out. Even your direct marketing, however you're doing that. Get people you trust and that feel good. And here's the thing about us always being entrepreneurs is sometimes we need to change course. Like we try something, okay, he feels like he's a good vendor, it feels good, but you just know, you can feel in your gut that you just know it's time to make a change or a shift. That helps with the overwhelm, is listening to yourself. The biggest mistake, and we've been listening today at the conference, that entrepreneurs make is they don't listen to themselves or they make a wrong decision. That's what they agonize over. It's all about listening to your intuition, because we know. And sometimes you're going to be right, sometimes you're going to be wrong. You're always going to learn something, because an entrepreneur is in this to win it and is in it to learn. We're always learning. That's just part of the game. And listening to the intuition, I think, makes the biggest difference. You know, I am very passionate about entrepreneurship because you know, we strongly believe that these are the drivers for economic, you know, energizing and empowerment. When you interact with entrepreneurs, what do you see are the core strengths and where do you think, if I may ask a couple of them, yeah. where they need to build really their personality? It's both. Um, the, the word I'm about to say is the skill and where we need work as entrepreneurs. And it's fear. The game is fear. Okay, so... Entrepreneurs, in so many ways, are fearless. All right, I've got this idea. I'll get the capital. I'll run with it. Um, I'll find joint venture partners, and I'll play, and I'll go. And then the other part, too, though, in this, the double-edged sword of fear, is when you're actually networking. I see it happen when you're networking, when you're actually presenting to maybe sell a client, or when you actually get into media. Uh, because when you're networking, you're megaphoning your message. So at a networking event, like what we're at today, at a networking event, you only have this much impact, right? Take that message and megaphone it on CNN, it's a very different conversation. 
Got what I'm saying? Yeah. So the fear level when you're networking, how are you doing with networking and deeply connecting with people, and how are you able to internally manage that fear and take your marketing to the level that you really want to play with it, whether it's traditional media? And how are you doing in social media? And are you making your company a global one? I'm assuming that's what a lot of entrepreneurs want, is because we're in a global economy, for sure. But the challenge is not everybody can get on to CNN, CNBC, or the world, right? Yeah. But that's not true. They can. It's a skill. I'm, not, I'm totally serious. It's a total skill. Mo a lot of my, my PhD work, what I look at is, um, can I do a PhD head for just a second? Sure. Can I do that? Okay. So there's this theory called agenda setting theory. It's basic mass comp theory. That's my master's is in, it's in mass comp theory. So basic theory sets, media sets the agenda. Walter Lippmann coined this theory back in the 1920s, okay? Media sets the agenda. Well, here I was working in news, and I'm like, nope. I worked at ABC, I worked at NBC, that's not how it works. The media is really not setting the agenda. And I'll explain why. So then I'm going through my master's program and I find another theory. And what happens to a lot of PhDs is we find a theory that really lights us on fire and we move on and take it, we want to take it into our PhD. And I found this theory called agenda building theory. And what this theory basically says is that up to 90% of what makes it on the air, particularly television, is pitched. 90%. And another way to look at it from a news person's perspective is that news is passive. News is passive and entrepreneurs don't know that. The people that are making it on the air, that are in the stories, are the ones pitching the stories. Mm -hmm. You've got to pitch. And, and I'm not talking about like when some, the president's in trouble or the governor's in trouble and the newsroom is following around, you know, following them doing their bad thing. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about all the other news. Um, all the imp other information that makes it onto a newscast, in particular, newsrooms are passively gathering that material because they want to show what's going on in the community. And if you happen to be, because I work a lot in multicultural groups, I work a lot in the Latino community, I work a lot in the black community, I work a lot in the Asian American community, just getting to know Indian community, which is really exciting. If you have no accent, and I wouldn't know what your ethnicity was by your voice, it's okay to tell the reporter, you know what, I am of Asian Indian descent, and I know you're very committed to diversity as you're pitching your story, because they are. They want to show all the different um, multicultural groups that are, so they have a well-rounded story. That's part of the reason why journalists are even attracted to the field of journalism to begin with. We want to make a difference. We want to show what's really going on in the world. We're here as watchdogs and to make a difference, truly. In your observations, uh, do human beings, you know, they kind of close in when it comes to networking. So yes. do you think they are naturally introverts or they're actually meant to be extroverts but they don't open up that easily? I think it's all the above. Uh, what a boring world it would be if we're all the same. Okay. You like think about it, all right? Our culture just happens to honor extroverts because they're uh, they're uh, outgoing, they're charismatic, they're fun. I look like an extrovert. I'm a converted introvert. Yeah, because it takes me something to get going, okay? I'm a converted introvert. And the real true introverts are so intuitive. Um, they're very kinesthetic, meaning they feel lots of energy. They're usually our most spiritual people walking on the planet, quite frankly. And in our culture, we sometimes make it look like that there's something wrong with them because they're not as extroverted, there's nothing wrong with them. There's nothing wrong with them at all. All that would really help them, because so much energy comes to them because they feel everything, is how do you practice, go out for a little while, connect a little bit, and then come back to your cave so you can regroup. But it's all about your energy. Extrovert, introvert, whatever you are, it, it, it really doesn't matter. It's about embracing who you are, being okay with who you are, and whatever culture says is okay is not okay, it doesn't matter. You being okay with it, truly. We need introverts and extroverts both. I wish it, just like in culture, we think pretty people are better. You know, it's just kind of how it works. We like people that smile too. So whether you're pretty or whether or you're not pretty or you're an introvert or an extrovert, it'll help you if you smile a lot. Because there's so much, there's so many studies on smiling and the impact of smiling and how it impacts people biologically. You know, I want to pick up on the cue and talk about cultural differences. And when it comes to networking, interacting with people, I'll just give you an example because I'm from Indian descent. Here, or in the most major Western countries, when you're interacting with somebody like I'm doing now, yeah. I'm actually looking at you, I'm in your eyes, I'm trying to respond to it, every yeah. word that you're saying. Yes. In the Indian culture, it's not so. Yeah. Most of the time, when we grow up, our answer does, we are, you know, put our eyes down, or we put our gaze low, and then we talk, that is sort of giving respect. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's not as prevalent now, but that's how most people grew up with. Yeah. So I'm sure there are other challenges when it comes to other cultures. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, do you see these uh, coming in and interaction yeah. with each other? And yeah. how do people overcome because, you know, this is land where it's, it's sort of melting pot. Yeah. So everybody has to assimilate in a way where we each understand, you know, each other a little better. Yeah. You, you hit it right, the nail right on that. Same, like, I think immediately the Latino community as well, um, especially the young women, have a hard time bringing their eyes up. And think about it, too. Um, a lot of entrepreneurs, like, go out as entrepreneurs after they've gotten a degree. In some, in some instances, I don't know the stats, but a lot of times they've gotten a degree, maybe they've worked in their field for a while, and then they venture out on their own because they have the experience to take it. You know, sometimes you'll see someone like 18, like Bill Gates or whatever, going to college for a few years and becoming an entrepreneur. Well, there's a lot of skill sets to learn along the way. And that is that confidence building. Even like when I think of Indian descent or I think of Latino descent, how did they do with asking for a raise? You know, especially when it's seen as a lack of respect, raising your eyes or asking for what you want. You get what I'm saying? So as you go through these different processes and these different phases of your career, you start learning how to do it. But the game is you gotta read books, you gotta go to workshops, you gotta be working on yourself. I will never stop working on myself. And not that I need to be fixed or something's broken or I need to get somewhere. This learning thing keeps me alive. It keeps me alive. I'm always challenging myself. I'm always stepping out to what's next and practicing. Because there's always a next game. And that's what the game is with entrepreneurs. You're always going to the next game. Because the, the economy is always changing. The world is always changing. To be a successful entrepreneur, you've got to go with the flow. Look at the automotive industry, for goodness sake. You know, being here in Detroit, um, you know, they, it, took them a little, it was a little harder for them to turn that big ship around. Um, you know, there could have been a lot of stuff that could have been avoided for them had they been more intuitive and not so bulked down and you know, were able to move that through. I think reporting is a very great uh, soft skill set for people, and they really need it. So I want to draw some nuggets out of you in, you know, in conclusion. Sure. Is what would you throw out there for people who are still looking to, you know, solidify themselves in soft skills? Yeah. So for the for we'll do it with introvert and extrovert. How's that? Introverts, what, before you go out, because a lot of times you just get stuck in your head, and then when you're actually networking, you seem a little odd. Okay, like, because you're thinking, sometimes you might not seem as confident because you're trying to think of what to say because you, that's just not your skill set to really be wide open with a big room of people. So what you do is you go on to AOL before you come to the networking event and you see the topic. What is some of the football games that won? What are some of the top stories? Celebrity. Celebrity stuff is so fun to talk about. So have three things in your brain before you go so you don't have to think about, you don't have to draw or try to think of something fun to say or something interesting to say, you already got it there and you can use it with all the, se the several people that you're meeting. Now for my extroverts, on the other hand, sometimes we just need to be quiet, right? <laughs> sometimes we talk too much and when I speak I talk a lot about puking, I know it sounds very odd, but sometimes we just puke on people, puke on blah, 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 blah. Take deep breath, quiet down, see if you can get what we call that cycle of reciprocity, that energy just going back and forth between you and another person. A great way to think about a cycle of reciprocity is before you got married or before you got in a relationship, when you went on that date and you just talked all night long. You ever had one of those? Of course. Right. And it's, and it's so cool because all you're doing is you're just going back and forth like on a date and it feels so good. When you can do that in business situations, when you can just keep that synergy just going back and forth in a real playful, fun, outrageous, fabulous way, that's when your business really starts to take off. That's the skill set, that soft skill set. And the way to practice that is breathing deeper, closing down, in, in terms of not talking too much if you're that extrovert. Sean, truly a pleasure. Thank oh. you so much. Oh, thank you. You are so kind. Thank you for having me.